Public One, Southern Indiana, and our Youth Services team to present to you. Um, I feel like I'm in good company with uh, the folks that have presented before me. Uh, and part of what I hear time and again is the value and the need for community partnerships. So I do want to share our aspect of that with you. Uh, I have one copy of our work experience boot camp that you can browse through while... Yep, we're good. Uh, we've, we've created, it's getting some uh, traction and attention as part of what we do. Um, I also to say that um, on behalf of uh, the continuum of regions that compose Indiana, the 12 regions, um, we all have generally the same scope of work and we follow the elements of we and we owe with our youth services. Um, but there's, the scaling is different based on the resources that you can bring to bear in your region. Our region uh, likes region seven and eight, and I think 11 get less dollars based on the federal formula. So the scale of what we do is different. Having said that, when I see what seven, eight, and 11 are doing, I'm impressed. Uh, one of the things I would like, to, uh, hopefully, uh, I'd like to get, and maybe we will just get, is uh, an electronic copy, maybe as just a collective PDF of these PowerPoints, because there's a lot of good information here that I can learn from and share with our youth team and, and our board back home. Um, so let's move on. Uh, the vision for Region 10, which is, um, we all know where Region 10 is, right? That generic word, Region 10. Down by Clark County. Yes, we are the uh, southern Indiana, the southernmost part of Indiana in the center, and we're part of the Louisville Metropolitan Statistical Area. Okay. So we share common ground with them around the, around the labor market okay. in a pretty uh, abiding uh, way that has uh, more advantage and benefit than, than anything else. And it's part of where we are, how we live, and mm -hmm. how business is conducted. And there's also this over two two billion dollar project called the bridges. Uh, yeah. And as great as the bridges are, and as many decades as it took to get it done, what's really on people's mind right now is, oh my gosh, I'm going to be paying a toll in six months, mm -hmm. um, which is understandable. Um, when we look at the vision for our board, um, and I like to underline and, and do that sort of thing to catch key words, is that the board aims to serve as a catalyst to just basically develop the workforce so that it's competing successfully in our neck of the woods in this 21st century global economy. And we all know there's been no economy like the one that we're in now, whether you're in region 7, 11, 1, 2, 10, doesn't matter. Our mission is to advance the growth of the workforce, especially through workforce resources that we have and that we can garner more of and especially for community and business partnerships. And that uh, comes across loud and clear like a banging drum across all the presentations that you're hearing uh, and seeing today. And hopefully we're no different. Uh, we have four basic goals or pillars. Whether you call them strategic priorities, goals, or pillars, you know what I'm talking about. And there are four items that abide for us. Um, and the key to this uh, is that regardless of how you word it, those priorities tend to not change. What changes is how you can get at them in the region that you live in and with the stewardship that you can bring to bear upon things. So for our first goal, because it is uh, our cornerstone, is to have as best a work one regional service system as we can that serves both the variety of job seekers that are out there. Uh, you can name them by specific populations, but I think you know what those populations are. Under WIOA, there is increased emphasis on serving people that have barriers, significant barriers, including the phrase of most vulnerable. Um, and aspects of 
All the work that we do with youth services is connected back to this. So when you look at those aspects from the Indiana Career Council's plan, they coalesce very well, and I suspect they do in every region, back to our uh, work one, front door, come on in, local access, direct services to job seekers and businesses, operations in our region. So we do align things systematically, and we are growing that and trying to cohere it more under WIOA and uh, the emphasis on a new partners or a new and better partners, one-stop partners network than has existed before. And I suspect every region is doing that. We're taking that to heart. Uh, we're meeting on a very regular basis. And I think that what we're trying to take out of this is that you know what we did under WIA sufficed, but this is a new day and more is, it, is expected of us as a one-stop partner network. Uh, we expect that of ourselves, and that includes what we do with uh, at-risk youth, the youth that we serve. Our services are person-centered or customer-centered, and they focus generally on cultivating the individual's talents, the persons that we serve one by one, towards that in-demand career in a family-sustaining way. And you've heard that kind of phrasing here today. It goes well for us also. And all that we do is focused on knowing what our sectors are, knowing what employer demands are, having good data and good employer inputs around that. For us, we have six sectors that are identified, and they're identified from an MSA by state point of view. Uh, we look at it both as region specific and as the MSA, and it dovetails. It simply consistently dovetails. And those sectors are manufacturing, healthcare, transportation, distribution, and logistics, information technology, construction, and professional or business services. You could almost call them the usual suspects. <laughs> but that's what the data shows. All these uh, sectors. Uh, our primary drivers, they're in demand, and there's a wide range of occupations and growth prospects towards that uh, career and family sustaining wage. And this, the content for these, um, uh, okay, the other goals are here on our, our one page here. Increasing educational attainment, Every customer that we have, as well as that shoe can fit on an individual level with that customer making a good informed decision with a good deal of uh, career guidance and exploration, things that you've heard from other regions already, we do those things also. Our third goal is with economic development. Uh, we do provide uh, assistance to them, particularly in terms of business expansion and business attraction projects, but there's more to it than that. Um, which I'll share with you in a moment. And specifically, goal number four is about youth and career preparation. And there's two parts to this. One is specific to really the script that we have today. And the other part has to do with how the board will use its influence, excuse me, its influence and its knowledge to partner with youth or student career prep activities throughout the region. We've got 15 school systems. Uh, and we uh, endeavor to have connectivity with all of them, some more than others. And this is what I want to speak to off script for a couple of minutes because it's important to share with you. It's those aspects of partnership that others have brought back that, that have been shared with you today. First, we do uh, almost every year what we call a Youth Career Expo. And that is for high school students, uh, especially eighth graders, um, but it can be junior, seniors, whoever the schools want to bring. We host it at our main Work One Center. We convert the entire uh, site into employer booths, post-secondary institution booths, that sort of thing. We have a passport model that each of the kids go by. So those are certain parts, uh, there's certain aspects of their journey during the career expo that they engage in. We use the entire facility, 
We can because of the prior investment by us and DWD together to build a rock solid, very functional work on center that we can use for more things than we ever could have used for our, our center for in our old facility as of five years ago. Uh, our last career expo, we had nine, nine or 15 schools attend, 350 kids, um, about 40 employers, and then post-secondary institutions. Uh, I wish I had pictures of it to share with you because I'm the photographer and I love to do that. The place is loud, bustling, folks are engaged. Secondly, this year, we did for the first time a high school job fair with the largest high school. We did it on a regional basis. It was at Jeffersonville High School where we also have a, one of our two JAG programs. And we had at least 50 employers there. Uh, a couple of hundred uh, folks attended. It was from four to seven. We're probably gonna change things up next year working with the high school so that uh, this mainstream effort uh, attracts more individuals. But we have a good baseline for that. And there's a number of other things that we're doing with Jeff High School and Greater Park Schools uh, that I'll get to. Uh, junior Achievement. Last year, uh, we participated on a scouting exhibition to Mobile, Alabama for their Worlds of Opportunity Career Fair, which is at, are any of you familiar with this? Junior Achievement? And, uh, the one in Mobile, Alabama? I have heard about this one. Okay. Uh, the Workforce Board down there does this in conjunction with other entities, so it is not the lead on it. They use their entire civic center and arena, have a host of different employers there that really roll up their sleeves and bring in serious equipment that the kids can interact with. Uh, it's very engaging stuff. When you just see what they've done with uh, the hospital employers there, it, it's amazing in terms of the square footage and the things that the kids can see and handle and talk with physicians and surge techs and nurses and what have you. And they do this with probably 12 different industry sectors, thousands of kids. So what we did in the Southern Indiana area and in the Louisville area was work it through Junior Achievement. They were willing to take the lead on it. God love them for doing that. And we had the first one this year, again, at uh, Jeffersonville High School. And again, it was regional. Uh, and it's called JA Inspire, so we have a baseline for that also. Uh, we also work with the Metro Manufacturing Alliance and their, our, and we co-founded the Manufacturing Day uh, events with them. We've only been doing that for a couple of years, shame on us, but now we're working with hundreds of kids. Uh, the kids go to different manufacturing operations and they see, along with their teachers, and we have externship, teacher externship programs also. You're kidding me. Okay. Uh, listen, not surprising for me. <laughs> um, but anyway, the last thing to say about, two last things to say about this real quick is that we're also engaged in a regional cradle to career initiative with a host of stakeholders that also affects youth uh, in a preventive and proactive way long term. And we also work with several school systems in terms of their college and career prep platform, which is very significant and it's changing the way the school does business. Um, In terms of our youth committee, we do not have one. We had one in the WIA. We're waiting to see how things play out in the WIOA transition. But we do have several board members that would play into that and are playing into that currently. And one other that's not listed, Becky Dutton, who's wonderful. Um, boy, this thing. OK, Jack. We have two programs each, uh, so we're aiming for 60 to 70 individuals at New Albany High School and Jeffersonville High School. We're handling the same platform that you've heard from others, uh, and that's my rationalization right there on that. With financial literacy workshops, we work with SBDC, a very good SBDC in our neck of the woods, um, and we provide a lot of information.
information with a lot of good tools in conjunction with Louisville and Kentucky Works labor market and career guidance information. We're emphasizing uh, career readiness at every turn. Uh, we're utilizing work experience boot camps, which you have um, the curriculum over there um, during spring and fall breaks. Uh, we're in our second year of doing that. And we engage our work on district service team to connect with our work experience coordinator so that we uh, work with a number of employers. Uh, overall, we have worked with uh, probably 30 employers, served 50 kids in our first year, which we did not imagine we could do, uh, with about 65% work experience completion rates. A good number of those kids also got their high school equivalency and uh, gained employment and or went into post-secondary training. Out of school, 100 that we're shooting for in the coming year, a uh, variety of outreach re and recruitment strategies. The key one is conducting many workshops at different places in the community. Also, we attend every career fair and a lot of community events. Work One is there, our youth team is there. Um, we're emphasizing two things, three things. Work experience, a customer service training module, and technology skills, all of which relate to, if you look at national studies, technology and communication skills are probably the two main most universal skill sets that individuals need to be able to be competitive in the workplace and grow a career. And we do that through uh, Work One resources, especially. Um, This shows our, our basic flow, whoops, between um, getting that HSE, enhancing skills, short-term credential, and then using one kind of work-based learning uh, mode or another, whether it's work experience or connecting with apprenticeship programs, uh, which we're doing hopefully more and more of. Um, we do engage in continuous improvement, uh, along lines of what you heard from others. Uh, this goes back to when workforce boards and regions worked on the Baldrige stuff over 10 years ago, so we know continuous quality improvement quite well. Uh, you can look at the strengths and weaknesses. We have a good platform. We have very good and passionate staff, but we do have issues regarding our scale, some issues regarding recruitment, and our local access through Work One has been a bit compromised or shrunk back because of funding cuts. Um, our budget, and you, and, and I knew we wouldn't, wouldn't get to the video, but uh, we do have, uh, we do leverage what we have and have partnerships with United Way and area foundations, for instance, as well as uh, our work, be it on a modest scale with Work Indiana uh, and grant funds that we have in conjunction with Kentucky and Works, which is really the way to go for us to gain uh, more resources for different facets of workforce training and skill now. And that is it, and I know that took more than two minutes. My apology. I get excited. Um, but it, it's important that you have some, some sense or perspective about what workforce boards do and some examples from us in terms of how we're endeavoring to help the mainstream student population with youth career preparation. And it's with the idea that along, all along the way, we're also recruiting and conducting outreach, not only for at-risk youth, but so that more people in the community, businesses and institutions know better who we are and how we will add value. And that hopefully has a snowball effect. Thank Questions, you. I dare you. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Fully aware that there are limited resources, and as you've heard today, um, a lot of the regions are really pursuing fundraising opportunities, especially through the JAG program um, and through other grants. Do you have anything, um, anyone dedicated to that effort, or is that something that your board is pursuing with the limited resources they have? That is a yes in terms of 
continuous improvement. We need to do that, whether it's through staff or com community partnerships that we can garner, and then, and then we currently do that, and with our board. Okay. We do need to do that. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Last